Madrid is the capital and most populated city in Spain, which has been experiencing ever-increasing heat waves, and it is having to rapidly adapt to these climate pressures. Since cities around the world consume two-thirds of the global energy supply and generate three-quarters of the world's greenhouse emissions, it's essential that cities are actively upgrading their infrastructure to become more green. And Madrid has become a leader in green infrastructure, ranking sixth in the European Union. This could be considered a major accomplishment, considering Madrid is the second largest city in the EU, with 3.4 million inhabitants, and up to 6.7 million people within its metropolitan area. Interestingly, Madrid lies almost exactly at the geographical heart of the Iberian Peninsula. It's a strategic location for the political and financial centre of the country because it's considered somewhat neutral, since Spain is made up of 17 autonomous regions, with some even having different cultural practices and even languages. Major cities across Spain are well connected to Madrid through an extensive network of bullet trains called AVE. With 3,100 kilometers of track, it makes it the longest high-speed rail network in Europe. It's Madrid's accessibility and high-tech infrastructure juxtaposed with historical buildings, which makes it an attractive destination for tourists. Before 2020, a whopping 7.6 million people visited Madrid each year, though numbers have dropped significantly in recent years to approximately 2.2 million people. Many tourists like to visit Spain for the warm climate, but Madrid's climate is fairly extreme, from cold, crisp and windy winters to very hot, dry summers. This is because the city sits at an elevation of some 646 metres above sea level, making it one of the highest capitals in Europe. The summer months of July and August are extremely oppressive, and this year was no exception, with the highest recorded temperature taken at 40.7 degrees Celsius. But in some cases it can feel like 45 degrees Celsius, due to the urban heat island effect from the concrete and tarmac radiating the sun's heat. Over the last decades, Madrid has been turning this around by pouring its resources into green infrastructure to adapt better to the changing climate. In this video, we will show you how a multi-lane highway was removed to restore an ancient river system called the Madrid Rio, which encompasses 47 different projects with a total cost of 280 million euros, which is improving the lives of millions of people by planting well over 9,000 trees and creating 30 kilometers of cycle path and multiple recreation spaces. So stick with us as we dive into today's video. Over the last months, I have been traveling to different regions across Spain, from the Atlantic climate of the north and to the Mediterranean coast in the east and to the desert conditions in the south with an aim to understand firsthand about the climate crisis happening here, since it's predicted the whole of the peninsula could become desertified by the end of the century. And what I discovered on this trip will surprise you. So make sure to subscribe with the notification bell turned on to stay up to date with forthcoming videos on this topic. But back to this video where I visited Madrid's river restoration called Madrid Rio to see for myself how the transformation looks after seven years of its completion. So I'm in the centre of Madrid. This is one of the main shopping streets and the sun has just gone down. Yet it's still extremely hot. It's 30 degrees plus and there's a lot of people around as well. But it's definitely the heat island effect because you can see there's a lot of concrete around. There's a lot of tarmac. There's a lot of shops and buildings and there's very little trees. So this is a prime example of a place that needs more trees, more green cover in the centre of the city to make it cooler. It's the same time of day and another busy road but the difference is really vast. It feels like 20 degrees cooler here because we have trees on the inside between the road and the sidewalk so you can instantly feel a nice breeze, it just feels more pleasant. The project to restore the river officially launched on June 2008 and it was completed and opened to the public in April 2015. The documented history of the city of Madrid dates back to the 9th century, but the area around Madrid's river, called the Manzanares, has been inhabited since the Stone Age, dating as far back as 120,000 years ago. Even the tusks of woolly mammoths were found deep in the sediment. The Manzanares was once a wide and shallow river valley. However, within the city limits of Madrid, the Manzanares River became canalized ever since the 1940s, which was aimed to control the precarious flow of the river, turning the wide open waterway into the high sided narrow channel. And by the 1970s, the concretization of the river allowed for the construction of the nine lane multi highway right next door to it. 
This immense feat of engineering at the time was seen as progress, but as a result, the connection between the residents and the river was severed and came at a huge ecological cost, since the area around the river had excessive amounts of traffic. What's crazy is it's just so much cooler down here, there's this breeze it's coming through the river. I was just up on the bridge where the traffic was and it felt like about 10 degrees hotter, so it just shows you like this carbon sink here, the restoration of the river. It's just making the surrounding environment more pleasant to be around and a nice place to sit and relax. Before launching the project, the city had to first convert the M30 multi-lane highway underground, resulting in a 10 km long parkland area, which allows for the public to have access to the riverfront once again. The idea to move the highway underground was inspired by Seoul's ambitious and successful urban river restoration project, which was completed in 2004. We also made a video on this subject, so do check it out after this show. For the renaturalization of the Manzaris River, the idea was to open six of the seven city dams, but due to the pressure from the local residents, it was decided to open all of them so the river could flow freely. As a result, the water level has dropped as the natural flow of the river has been restored. There has also been noticeable improvement in avian biodiversity along the river, with herons and kingfishers. After years of construction, the Madrid Rio is now a destination for anyone wanting to enjoy a stroll or jog along the river. The traffic and smog has been almost entirely removed and the area is pedestrian friendly. There are also multiple sports facilities with the aim to make the park more comfortable and enhance its enjoyment. So behind me, you can see there's a pop-up exercise class and it just shows that when you create these urban green spaces, all kinds of things can happen in these spaces. So it's good for people. You, know, you can have art, coffee shops, restaurants. It can be a mixed use space and it's communal. So it just gives people the opportunity to be able to make money and have businesses. It's great for biodiversity, the environment, but it's also helps people to get work and find happiness, to be social, to move their body and be healthy in the cityscape. 5,506 new benches have been installed and 63 drinking fountains, as well as 84 bicycle racks. And to facilitate the crossing between the districts located on both banks of the river, there are 33 walkways. Some of the newly built bridges have become new city icons. Now that the multi-lane M30 highway has been buried underground in tunnels that offer high safety measures and are fitted with ventilation stations to dilute the pollutant concentration inside, cases of local people being hospitalized with health issues related to the inhalation of nitrogen oxides has decreased and noise pollution levels have dropped significantly since its completion. The Madrid Rio project is just one of many initiatives to fight pollution and reduce greenhouse gases, so Madrid can fulfill its pledge to become a carbon neutral city by 2050, since even though the number of cars on the road in Madrid had almost doubled in the last 10 years, it's gradually starting to pull back. And with the creation of more cycle paths and green corridors for pedestrians, Madrid could become a leading model for urban sustainability within this decade. Thank you for watching Leaf of Life. If you wish to support our channel, then please check out our Patreon. We have also dedicated a playlist on videos about Spain, and we have a Spanish language channel. You can check out the links in the pinned comment and the description below.